Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, you're watching the second part of a five-part series all about shooting video on a DSLR. Well, last week we learned all, a bunch of geeky stuff all about shutter angles and uh, interlaced and non-interlaced video, things like that. Well, this week we start doing some fun stuff. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about lighting for video. First, I'm gonna show you different lighting fixtures and what they do, and then we're gonna put those fixtures into practice by showing you some different lighting setups so you can really take what you learned today and put it into practice. And then next week, we're gonna be talking about audio, and then we're gonna finish up the series talking about post-production work and making sure everything looks great on the web. But let's get started this week by talking about lighting. Well, there are all kinds of lights and light modifiers, things like this umbrella here, and they all do specific jobs. And so what I wanna do is turn each one of these lights on one at a time, tell you what the light is, what it's meant to do, and then you'll be able to see exactly how it looks. Now there's all kinds of different brands. We have three of the most popular brands here. We have some lights by Airy. We have some great lights over here by Lowell, and even these little guys by Light Panels. And so I'll show you each one of those. So let's take a look. This is an Airy, Airy Light 1000. It's an open face fixture. And so what you can see is right now we have it on the flood setting. It really illuminates the entire scene. I can really dial that in by changing it to spot. And you can see that that really spotlights Don. If I want more uh, control, I can use these barn doors. I'm wearing gloves because they get really hot. And so I can uh, really restrict the light and I can spin that around. And I can really zone that in on just Don and eliminate the background light. So now we have the exact same light. It's an Airy, Airy Light 1000 open face light, but we've added a Shimera soft box, and you can see that the light is now really nice and soft. Those hard shadows are gone. But normally when you're using a, a soft box like this, you want it much closer to your subject. So I'm gonna move this really fast, and so we're gonna put it much closer to Don. And so now that we have that here, you can see that this looks really good. And we're gonna zoom in and you can see what this would normally look like if we were shooting maybe an interview or a testimonial. That's what you would normally use a light like this for. And you can see it looks really, really nice. All right, so the next light up is the Lowell Pro. And this light is great because you can do all kinds of things with it. Right now we have it set to the flood setting. And so you can see that it really illuminates the scene. If I want more punch and I really wanna make that light hard, I can adjust this to zoom in. And so we get much harder and brighter light. And the cool thing is this also comes with barn doors. So I can also adjust the light and really get it in exactly where I want it to be. So let's say I wanna get this just on Don's face. And so I can really dial this in so it's really nice and tight. And there you have it. So uh, we can also adjust this and use an umbrella to soften the light. So I'm gonna show you that next. Okay, well this is that Lowell Pro Light. And what I did was I've just added an umbrella. This is a special umbrella that's made for high heat. Don't use any normal umbrella because it could catch on fire. But what this does is it allows you to soften the light just like a normal umbrella for a studio strobe. And so what we'll do is I'm gonna place this much closer to Don, just like we did with the uh, softbox before. So I've turned it on. Now I'm gonna move this closer. And you can see that this really gives us nice soft light but you really need to be pretty darn close for that to be effective. But you can see it's a really, really nice light. Again, it can be used for interviews or maybe a testimonial video. It's really a wonderful setup. Now this is the Lowell Tota light, and the Lowell Tota light, uh, in this configuration, this is just the light with its uh, open face, is not usually meant for illuminating people. It's meant for lighting open spaces because it's just a really hard light. So this is similar to what an open face light. So the airy open face light that we showed you, this would be the equivalent of that. It's just really made to light a big open ambient space. So you can see as I move this, I can sort of change where the light falls. The cool thing though about the Tota lights is that they come with attachments so you can diffuse the light, you can change the color temperature, and you can even soften the light for using it for lighting things like interviews and testimonials. So let me show you again this Tota light with a diffusion filter on, and then I'll show it to you again with a, an umbrella so you can see how you can light people. All right, well, this is that Lowell Total Light, and uh, what I've done is I put a diffusion filter on the front. It's just this square frame that comes with the light, and it attaches. And so what this is gonna do is it's going to diffuse the light, make it much softer, and it's something that you can use. It's uh, similar to a soft box. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar, and it's gonna make the light much softer. So uh, I'll turn this around and turn it on, and you can see what this looks like. So I'll lock this down, 
turn on the light, and now you can see that we have, again, nice illumination, but now the light is really soft, and we don't have those hard shadows like we did before. So this can be used for lighting large spaces where you want the light to be soft, maybe for doing interviews or, or lighting people. All right, well now we have the total light, the Lowell total light, and I've added this umbrella. Again, this is a high temperature umbrella, and uh, so what this does is it really softens the light because the light's bouncing off the umbrella, and you can see that now we really have soft light. Now, the thing to watch out for with this is because the light is pointing toward the camera, you can really get some lens flare and you might have to flag that light off. But uh, normally what we do is we put this much closer to our subject, and we get that really nice uh, interview and testimonial look once again, and this gives us a look that's much more like a softbox would be. So a lot of possibilities with using a total light, either to light up the ambient uh, areas, large spaces, a nice soft large light, or a nice soft light that's used for an interview or a testimonial. All right, let's talk about one of the workhorses of video lighting, and this is a Fresnel light. Fresnel is uh, named for the lens that's on the front of this, and you can see this looks like a lighthouse kind of lens. Uh, and it was invented by the same guy that made lighthouse lenses, and he was Mr. Fresnel. And so it's pronounced Fresnel, it looks like Fresnel, but it's pronounced Fresnel. So that's what this uh, is called, it's a Fresnel light. This is actually uh, an Airy 650. The 650 means 650 watts of light, and the power is measured in watts. And so you have a 650, you could have maybe a 150, a 300, and then they even go up to 1,000 and 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, and even 20,000 watt lights. Those are very, very powerful and very expensive. But we're going to stick with the 650. It's a workhorse that most people use uh, for all different types of things. Now you can't really tell the difference between a Fresnel and the other lights that we were showing you earlier because we're changing the exposure so they all look about the same luminosity, the same brightness. But I can tell you that this light has a lot more power and so if you really want to close down your uh, aperture and shoot with a greater depth of field or light something from a greater distance, you need more punch and that's why this light is used by so many people. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on and show you some of the things that uh, you can do with this light. So I'll raise it up here. Now this also has a flood and spot setting and so this is going to change our exposure really fast. So Don, get ready, bam, there we go. This is the flood setting. So you can see that we're really illuminating the background and Don, and we get this really nice look, but our shadows are pretty darn hard. But that's what a Fresnel light does, is it gives us nice, even, hard light. Now, if I want to zoom this in, I can move the reflector by turning this little knob on the back of the Fresnel, and that really gives us a lot of power and punch and really focuses the light on a central area. And I can even uh, really restrict the light even more than that by using some barn doors. So again, I'm wearing gloves because these get really hot. And you can see that just like before with the other lights, I can really restrict the light to get it exactly where I want it to be. And because this is a very focused hard light, I can really shape the light. I can make different pools of light in a scene and uh, texture everything exactly how I want it. So that is a Fresnel. Specifically, this is an Airy 650, and this is the light that we use a lot in our studios. Okay, we're going to show you another light. Then this is a little bit different. In fact, it's a lot different than the other lights that we showed you. And the reason for that is it's a cool light. In other words, it's a fluorescent light, a very special kind of fluorescent light, and it doesn't get extremely hot like all the other lights do. Uh, so the other lights, they get so hot that you can actually burn your hands. You have to wear gloves, and they're called hot lights because they get really, really hot. Now this guy, I'll turn it on in a second. I'll show you. You can actually put your hands right on the lamps, and you will not burn your hands. This is terrific for a couple of reasons. One, it takes a lot less energy, so your power bills are going to be less, and your talent isn't going to get all sweaty because you won't have that really, really hot light, or you'll save money in your air conditioner. So these uh, Studio Cools are great. So this is an Airy Studio Cool 4, which means it has four lamps. There are Studio Cool 2, I believe, so you have two lamps. The other thing that's really neat about these lights Normally on a hot light, you change the color temperature by putting different colored gels in front of the lights. Well, these, you can actually take the lamps out and interchange them between different color temperature lamps. So you can have a 3200 uh, 3, Kelvin uh, lamp and put that in there if you want to match it to a tungsten light. If you want to match it to maybe a flash or something else, you can pull those out and put in a 5500 uh, 
Kelvin light. And so you get all different types of uh, color temperatures from a single fixture just by changing these lamps out. So it's really nice. So I'm going to uh, turn this on and you'll see that it's really nice soft light. And you can use it for lighting up large areas. You can use it for lighting uh, uh, portraits are doing interviews, things like that. And when we're doing Adorama TV on our sets and we're doing all of our product reviews, we're doing the intros and endings, all of that is lit with two of these. And so we use these every single day in the studio. And here in Arizona where it's really, really hot, well, the temperature matters to us a lot. So I'm going to turn this on really fast. You turn it on just by plugging it in. The other thing that you can do, because this is a studio light, you can actually control this from a remote control panel. So you can get a dimmer and uh, control these and turn them on and off. If you want to have them mounted in a studio in a ceiling, you can hang them upside down. You can put them on light stands like we have them. So there's all kinds of options. And you can see that I can have this very, very close to dawn. And it looks really good. I can move it back and illuminate this whole section. And uh, you know it still looks pretty darn good. It's nice soft light. And I can move this around. You can see I have my hand right in front of it. And it's not hot enough to burn my hand. So that's really nice. So again, this is called an Airy Studio Cool. And it's the uh, light that we use with our uh, Fresnels. Those two lights we use all the time, every single day. And those are our workhorses. Well, we have one more light to show you. It's the light that's illuminating me right now. So let me show you that light next. Well, the last light I want to show you is called the Light Panel Mini Plus. And it's the light that's illuminating me right now. And we use these all the time in the studio when we're trying to show lighting setups. Because one of the problems with making these videos is we have to light me showing other lights. And if we use really large lights, like a Fresnel or a Studio Cool, well, we, il we illuminate the entire scene. And then you can't see the other lights. So these things are amazing. So we're going to turn on the other lights. And I'm going to show you how this thing works. So we actually have it attached to this little arm right here. So it was out of the scene for the rest of this video. I'm going to take this guy off really fast. And so uh, that just pops right off there. And then I'll turn this off. And this has got a uh, quarter 20 thread on the bottom and on the side. And so what that means is you can put a stud on it like this and then mount that to a light stand. You can even put a uh, hot shoe adapter on there to light it. Uh, put it right on the top of your camera. The cool thing is uh, the light and the battery are separate. And so uh, you can get different batteries when one runs down, which takes quite a bit of time. You can just pop a different uh, battery on the back here. And then there's this little cable that connects this to just like that. You can check to see how much battery life you have by just pushing this little button. It looks like this battery is about dead, which is no big deal because we have some more batteries. The other thing is you can change the color temperature by popping out uh, in and out different colored gels. And and those are really easy and fast to put in there, and they won't fall out. Now, the cool thing is these will not only uh, mount to light stands, but they're made for either going on top of your camera for doing uh, ENG work, which is environmental news gathering, so doing uh, on-location reporting, things like that, maybe at events, weddings. These things are great. They're LED, so they're not going to heat up really, really hot. You can get really close to people. But you can actually handhold these. You don't need a light stand. So if you're walking around doing a lot of things and you really need to illuminate somebody, but the camera is moving everywhere, well, you can get a person to hold these. So I have Don come out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off our other light and turn on this light. And so if we needed to illuminate Don, I would just stand on the side here. And as she would walk around, I could just actually follow her with this, just staying outside of the camera. And everything is good. So that is a light panel. And we love these for the studio and on location. Well, there you have it. Those are our lights and some examples of what they look like in a studio space. But really, what we need to do is take a look at these in a real life situation. And that's what we're going to do next. And so there is really no single way to light anything. In fact, there are probably millions of ways to light things. And normally, you'd be using all these different lights in combination. And so we're going to walk through some scenarios. We're going to walk through a very simple short film to show you how we lit our studio for the movie that we showed you in our last episode, which is mad at my boyfriend. We're going to show you how we lit that. We're going to show you how to light a two-person interview. We'll show you how to light an on-location testimonial video. So maybe if you're doing an event or uh, getting some great info from uh, a reception at a wedding, we have people talking to the bride and groom. You can use this lighting situation. And then as well, we're going to show you how to light a very simple product setup. And based on those different lighting setups, you can make up your own lighting setups, and you'll be well on your way. So let's get started by showing you how we lit our short film, Mad at My Boyfriend. 
All right, I want to walk you through a setup that we used when we filmed Don acting out the little short film called Mad at My Boyfriend, where we showed selective focus in a previous episode. Let me walk you through each of the lights that we used in this uh, setup. Now, we wanted to create different pools of light. So the very first light we used is this Lowell, Lowell Pro light. It's just a little teeny light, and I just set it right on top of this uh, lamp right here, and that makes this lamp look like it's actually on. Now, you need to be careful if you're doing something like this to make sure that the fixture that you're putting a light on can take the heat. This one can because we made sure it was specially set up for this. So don't just put a light anywhere or it could catch something on fire. It's very, very dangerous to do that. But we made sure we did this in a safe way. Now, uh, in addition to this, we needed a light that made it actually look like that light was shining on dawn. And because we've compressed everything with the lens that we used, we were able to put this light. This is an airy, airy light with a soft box, and that lights up dawn from the side. So if you can come over here, you can see that this light is actually an open face light with the soft box. And so it gives us a really, really soft light, and we emulated the look of dawn being illuminated by that lamp in the back. So come back over here, and I'll show you uh, what we have for this uh, telephone. Now this telephone, we have a light on it. It's called a special light. And the reason it's called a special, that's not a brand name, that means it only does one thing. And what we wanted to do is we just wanted a little pool of light on the phone so that when we were moving our focus in and out, we had this uh, to be more dramatically lit. So we did that by closing down all these barn doors. And this is a Lowell Pro light. It's just a really small light that uh, you can focus. And so we focused that right here on this phone. Now, the other thing we wanted to do was we wanted to give Dawn a little bit more backlight so that her hair didn't fall flat. So we'll come back over here and look at Dawn really fast. So we had this soft light lighting uh, this side of her face. We needed a little bit more light over here just to make it look like the room had some ambient light. And so what we did was we used this Lowell Toda. I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't blow everything out. And you can see that this Lowell Toda has a silver umbrella. This gives us really nice, soft light. And, and just sort of allows us to fill in the other side of Dawn. And the other thing, I'm going to turn this back on so you can see this. Um, we had too much light spilling on the background back here. And so what we did to make sure that we didn't have light uh, just falling all over here and ruining the effect of this light that was turned on, we added this flag. It's just a big piece of black cloth that's meant for high heat. And that blocks that light out to make sure that none of that fell on the background. So only the light that we wanted to fall on Dawn fell on Dawn, and everything else was eliminated using this flag. Now, once again, remember that all of these lights are really, really hot. They're called hot lights. And so to move them or adjust them, you need to wear gloves or something to make sure you don't burn your hands. And if you do something crazy like this, where you put a light on a fixture, make sure that you're doing it in a safe way, or you could really catch something on fire and cause a lot of damage. So always make sure you keep safety first. Well, that's how we lit up Dawn in her uh, scene in Mad at My Boyfriend. Well, let's go out to the uh, next lighting setup, and we'll show you how to do some more lighting lighting tricks. All right, so this is our lighting setup for a two-person interview. We just finished this interview. Here's Don. I was sitting in this chair. Let me walk you through first how the cameras were set up, and then I can tell you how the lights were set up in relation to those. So we have three cameras. This first camera really it establishes the scene. So it shows both Don and myself. So it shows both of us. So we can cut back and forth between this camera and our two side cameras. So we're going to go over here and show you this first camera here. This is our Nikon D3S. This is the camera that's pointing directly at my face. So when I'm sitting here, it's actually uh, showing me. So when I'm talking to Don, it's getting my face. Now, ideally, we would want this camera to be a little bit more to the other side of the light. And the reason for that is it would give me more of a direct frontal light on my face. Now, we didn't do that in this situation because, as you can see behind me, the background is really nasty. We didn't want to show that in the video. If we were in more of a uh, maybe a conference room or a place that you would normally do an interview, that wouldn't have been a problem. So we had to cheat the light a little bit. Now, on the other side, we did the exact same thing. So to make sure that we shot Don and we could have her, we have this light over here, I mean, this camera over here. And it is doing the same thing as our Nikon did. This is a Canon. 5D Mark II, and it's shooting Don's face. And we can cut in and out of that for the close-ups on Don. Now, to light this, we kept it as simple as possible. We're using two open-face lights. This is an Airy 1000 Airy light. It's an open-face fixture. And on the front of that, we placed this Chimera softbox. Now, the softbox does two things. It uh, acts as the key light, so it's bringing light right here on Don's face. 
and that gives us a nice, even, soft light. But when I'm sitting in this other chair, it's illuminating the back of me. And you can see on the other side, we have a light that's exactly the opposite of that. And what it's doing is it's bringing light over here to where I normally would be sitting. So it's lighting the front of my face. But you can clearly see that it's also lighting the other side of Don's head as well. And so that gives us some fill light and it gives us our key light. Now, if we were in a bigger situation where we had uh, more room and we needed to light up maybe some background or a larger space, we might throw in some airy Fresnel lights or some different Lowell uh, lights to uh, maybe boost the ambient light. And you can start placing lights in different situations to uh, augment things or really give some uh, special effects on maybe a banner or a sign or something that's really important. But this is the best way to shoot a two-person interview and keep it really, really simple. Uh, so uh, you're involved in a lot of sorority work. Mm -hmm. So first of all, where did you go to school? I went to Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton. Mm -hmm. And you graduated 20 years ago? <laughs> no, I graduated in 2009. Okay, I want to show you a lighting setup that's used for testimonial videos, meaning videos that you shoot maybe uh, at the end of a conference or a retreat, or maybe even at a wedding reception to have people give good tidings to the bride and groom. And so this is a very, very simple lighting setup. It's very portable. It only uses two lights and a reflector. So to show you this, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to record the video on our uh, Nikon here, and then I'll show you how we've set each of these lights up, and then we'll turn them off one by one, and then turn them back on so you can see see exactly what each light does. So first, let's talk about these lights. So what I have here is I have a key light, and this is a Lowell Pro with an umbrella. And then uh, that gives us pretty good light in and of itself, but without something to fill in the left side of Don's face, there's just too many shadows. And so we have this silver reflector. That's just a normal five-in-one reflector that we're using. And we really need something in addition to that to illuminate the background. And so we have this Tota, I mean, sorry, this Lowell Pro light that is illuminating the background. And we've used the barn doors to give a little bit of shape to that light. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off these lights. I'm going to move this reflector out of the way here. And then what we're going to do is show you exactly what each of these lights do. So this is what this light setup looks like with no lights, which is really dark. I'll show you what this looks like now with just the key light on. And you'll notice that we've placed this key light as much as we can right in front of Don without getting into the camera to give us a nice front light. So almost the entire face is illuminated. But still, we have too, mon too many shadows on the opposite side of the light. So what I'm going to do here is just use this silver reflector. This is, again, it's just a normal five-in-one reflector with a stand. And I'm going to put this over here on the opposite side of Don's face. And that will really light up uh, her, the shadows in her face and fill that in. And that looks pretty darn good. Well, the other thing we need to do, though, is we really need to separate Don from the background and add a little punch. And so that's where this uh, other Lowell Pro light comes in. So I'll turn that on, and that illuminates our background. Now, the cool thing is we're using this in the studio on a piece of seamless blue paper. Well, uh, at a wedding or something, you probably don't have seamless paper. You might have a tree or a building or maybe a wall in a room, and it'll work just the same. You can really shape that light and give it some diagonal look or make it fall off or make it round. You can do all kinds of things by zooming that light in and out. And so you have a lot of options with just two lights and a reflector. All right, now we have our lights set up to shoot a product video. And in this video, we're going to feature the uh, Nikon D3100. This could be any product. We just grabbed this camera because we think it's beautiful. Um, and what we're doing here is let me first show you how we have the camera set up, and then I'll talk to you about the lights, because the camera setup is, is really important. So this is our Nikon D3S that's shooting the video. I have it set at a really low angle, and that's important because the camera needs to be able to see the product and just the background. We're using a seamless white background and nothing else. If it sees the floor or the ceiling or anything else, we're going to have issues. And so this is a pretty low camera angle. Now lighting this, we have our key light, which is an Airy Light 1000 with a soft box. This is just giving us a nice even wash on our product. Um, the important thing is this has to make sure that there's no light falling on the background. And so I've added a flag here. So this is uh, what's called a flag. It's just a piece of black cloth, and it blocks the light from hitting the background. Speaking of the background, walk around here with me, and I'll show you what we've done. We have our Airy 650 Plus here, and this is giving us a lot of light on, again, our seamless white background. And we want it to be absolutely blown out, just really, really uh, white, saturated white. And we'll come over here, 
and we have a special light. This is our Lowell Tota light with an umbrella. We have it turned off right now because it, it blows everything out in the camera. But what this does is it allows us to light up the back of the camera and the uh, white turntable here. And what that would allow us to do is it'll make this wide enough that you can't see the edge of this turnstile. So what we're going to do here to really make sure that you understand what these lights are doing, we're going to turn off the ambient light, so it's going to get a little bit dark in here. And then I'm going to turn on the video on uh, this camera, and we're going to walk you through each of these lights one at a time. So what I'll do is I'll start this video, and now we've got sort of a split screen here going on, and you'll be able to see what this is doing as well as what each light is doing. So right now, the only thing we have on is the background light, and you can see that we have a really nice white background uh, on our product, but the product is silhouetted, so we don't like that. So the main light, I'll turn that on now. You can see that really lights up our product really nicely. The problem is, though, this edge on the back here shows up because it's a little bit darker than the white background that we have. So we have to match that somehow because we want it to look like our product is sort of floating in air. And that's what this light does right here. So I'm going to turn this guy on, and that gives us some of that uh, highlights on the back of our product as well as blowing out the uh, Lazy Susan. And now, once that's done, I can use my string in here, and then I can just rotate that camera and we have some beautiful product video. Well, there you have it. Lighting setups for short films, interviews, testimonials, and product videos. I hope you can put those into practice. We had a lot of fun making these videos, and we had a lot of fun making next week's video all about audio for DSLR videos. So please join us as we go over how to mic things properly and get that into the computer and do all of your post-production because we have a few more weeks left about all of this video for DSLR. Well, thanks for joining me this week. Remember, if you have questions about uh, photography, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.